Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching as always, and a special thanks to my channel members for their continued support. So today I wanted to take a look at Rocket Lab and compare it to what I consider to be the closest similar company that is traded publicly on the stock market. And I wanted to do this for a few reasons. First of all, a lot of us and a lot of people out there, you know, tend to think Rocket Lab is crazy, stupid, cheap right now. And I can definitely understand that feeling. If just look at the stock price, it used to be $10 plus. Now it's trading in the 3.8 range. So, you know, it's natural to say, oh my God, it's, it used to be 10, now it's threes, therefore it's super cheap. But as most investors will know, there's a lot more to the story than what the stock price used to be and what what it is now we have to dig deeper if we want to see how cheap is it really compared to other companies doing similar things now this is very difficult when it comes to rocket lab because they're planning to be a fully integrated space company with launch space systems and all the rest closest company I can think of may be Firefly, but unfortunately they are not publicly traded. So next closest publicly traded company I would consider to be MDA. They're a very interesting one, Canadian company specializing in manufacturing satellites as well as some space robotics. They don't have the launch side of the equation, which Rocket Lab does and I think is a big plus for Rocket Lab. But on the other hand, they are profitable already. They're a little bit less risky. And I think it's an interesting comparison just to see, you know, how, what kind of multiples these two are trading at and what looks cheaper. It's a lot more complicated and nuanced than you might believe. It's not just Rocket Lab in threes, therefore Rocket Lab very cheap. Let's dig a little bit deeper on this one. So first of all, gonna do a quick overview on MDA and what they do, as well as a very quick overview on what Rocket Lab does, because I'm sure most of you are already very familiar with that. Then we're gonna dive into some numbers and uh, hopefully the comparison will give us a little bit more clarity. If you do like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing by the end of the video. Every new subscriber is very much appreciated and really helps out with the channel. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at Rocket Lab and MDA Space. MDA Space is a Canadian space technology company that provides geo-intelligence, robotics, space operations, and satellite systems. With over 450 missions in their history, MDA Space is a trusted space mission partner to the rapidly expanding global space industry. Their expertise spans communication satellites, Earth and space observation, and space exploration and infrastructure. MDA Space has recently introduced two exciting new product lines. First up is MDA Aurora, a software-defined satellite product line that addresses the growing demand for higher performance and cost-effective digital constellations. They also have MDA Chorus, a fourth-generation Earth observation constellation that is building on the RadarSat program, providing market-leading data and insights. On the robotics side of things, MDA is perhaps most well known for their work on the Canada Arm 3 robotic space arm, the successor to the current arm on the International Space Station that you can see grabbing cargo capsules and berthing them to the station as well as performing other important work. They recently just signed the largest contract in the history of the company for $2.1 billion for the development of the Lightspeed Low Earth Orbit Satellite Constellation, which will be comprised of 198 satellites and an optional additional 100 satellites, making future growth prospects look very bright for MDA space. For Rocket Lab, this probably goes without saying for the majority of viewers, but for anyone new to the channel, Rocket Lab is building out a fully end-to-end -end space company. Starting with launch, they operate the Electron rocket, which is a small launch vehicle and currently launching the second most frequently of any American rocket next to only SpaceX's Falcon 9. They're also currently working on building out a next generation partially reusable medium launch vehicle called the Neutron which is due for launch at the end of this year or perhaps more likely in 2025. 
Now, they also have a growing space systems division, which already delivers over three quarters of their revenue and builds out satellites and components for other customers. Rocket Lab recently secured a deal worth over half a billion dollars for the U.S. government agency, the SDA, to build out 18 satellites, which is by far the largest contract in the history of the company and one of the reasons why they are such a good comparison to MDA who also builds out satellites. Rocket Lab does have a long-term vision of building, launching, and operating their own satellite constellation, cutting out all the middlemen and generating recurring revenue streams based on their own space assets instead of just selling satellites as a one-off product. This long-term vision is, in my opinion, one of the big differentiators between Rocket Lab and MDA Space, at least when it comes to the big picture. So now that everyone is a little bit more familiar with MDA, I thought it would make sense to take a look at the numbers between these two companies, compare what kind of sales and revenue figures they do have, and see, you know, what could look cheaper overall. So Rocket Lab currently has a market cap of around $2 billion. A lot of us here probably consider that quite cheap, considering everything they do and how fast they're growing. Enterprise value is looking at just under $2 billion. Currently don't have a price-to-earnings ratio because they are not yet profitable but the price to sales ratio is looking to be about eight right now and the price to book is 3.63 now price to sale that is basically the market cap of the company divided by the amount of revenue they've brought in over the past 12 months looking at MDA on the other hand their market cap is actually very similar at around 1.76 so very comparable to Rocket Lab their enterprise value 2.26 billion they do have a price to earnings multiple which is a trailing 36 and a forward 22 suggesting pretty strong growth for the coming year for the company and a price to sales ratio currently is only 2.21 obviously significantly lower than Rocket Lab's eight on that metric. Zooming in a little bit here on the revenue growth of the two companies, because since MDA is trading so much cheaper on a price to sales basis, you would expect Rocket Lab to be growing much faster in order to justify that higher multiple. Taking a look at the revenue growth of Rocket Lab from 2020 to 2023, we can see they went from 35 million to 62 to 210 to 244. So very lumpy, but some pretty impressive growth numbers in there. We're seeing 77% growth from 2020 to 2021, followed by a massive 339% growth from that 2021 number to 2022, and a much more modest 15% growth in 2023. However, that being said, the growth doesn't appear to be slowing for the long term because the guidance we're looking at for 2024 is significantly higher than this 244 million number. Most of us following the company do expect them to do at least 400 million in revenue for this year, making a very significant growth over 2023. So the revenue will continue. If you average out these past three years, we're looking at a growth rate of over 100%. It's actually 143%, so more than doubling every year. But there are some factors you have to think about with this. So they did raise a bunch of money when they went public via SPAC, about $700 million. And with a lot of that money, they made acquisitions of other companies four major acquisitions as well as some other minor ones and these acquisitions really fueled the growth rate in that first year 2022 so it, some people would consider this to be kind of just buying revenue it's not organic growth it's inorganic growth and that war chest that they built from this back obviously doesn't last forever so you can't just expect them to continue buying more and more revenue by buying these external companies because you know they can't just spend like that forever uh, another thing to consider, they did announce a capital raise frequently 
recently, which will raise about $300 million, and they are planning to make yet another acquisition. So on the one hand, yes, that acquisition should drive even more revenue growth in the future, which is good. We love to see it. On the other hand, that does mean shareholders are likely facing dilution, something you don't like to see. So yes, these revenue growth numbers are very impressive for Rocket Lab, and I love it. That's one of the reasons I'm invested in the company. On the other hand, uh, it does does come at a cost to shareholders, which we don't really see so much on the MDA side. Now, speaking of MDA, let's dive into their growth numbers as well. We can see here we have got a bit of a less history for MDA, but in 2021, when they went public, they're looking at about $476 million, so just shy of half a billion. Then they grew respectably to $641 million, and then 2023, we're looking at $800 and seven million dollars so still very solid growth numbers for mda and if you look at it we're talking about 29 percent on average over the last year nothing to complain about for a growth company and this company uh significantly less risky because they are already profitable so don't really have to worry so much about them going out of business or so much about the dilution that you have when it comes to a rocket lab also just recently booked this extremely large contract for the Telesat Constellation, $2 billion, whereas the biggest contract Rocket Lab has received to date is half a billion dollars. So the growth should continue for MDA and that contract can give you a lot of confidence that they will have business for their new satellite lines. So zooming out between the two, we have a price to sales ratio for Rocket Lab of almost four times what it is for MDA. Price to book for Rocket Lab is almost double what it is for MDA. But looking at the compound annual growth rate between the two, Rocket Lab past four years, we're looking at about 143% on average per year. MDA looking at around 29% on average per year. So Rocket Lab has been growing much faster, but you have to consider those mitigating factors. The cash from the SPAC doesn't last forever. There is some dilution fueling this growth and MDA a little bit less dilution and a little bit safer because they're already profitable. So that is the trade-off we're looking at between these two companies. Taking a look at the stock performance of the two, it has generally over the past few years been a bit of a risk off market since 2021. And a lot of investors have rotated into pr profitable companies and avoided unprofitable companies. Uh, Rocket Lab has severely underperformed MDA despite growing their revenues at a higher rate. Probably has a lot to do with the profitability factor, as I said previously, but since uh, mid 2021, we're looking at minus 4% for MDA and a whopping minus 58% for Rocket Lab. So there's a couple ways to look at that. Obviously, you can just look at the chart and say, well, Rocket Lab must be quite cheap if it's at nine minus 58%. Or you can look at that and say, well, Rocket Lab must have been way overvalued a few years ago if it was, you know, 50 plus percent more more than it is today, uh, two sides of the same coin, whereas MDA at least has been pretty flat if you zoom out far enough. And on the short term, they've actually performed quite well since April of last year. So those are the breakdown of the numbers between the two companies. Again, very similar. Rocket Lab, three quarters of their revenue coming from that space system side of the business. And MDA is almost 100% space systems, really, if you think about it that way. So MDA, Clearly not quite growing as fast, but a safer bet and much cheaper on a price to sales ratio. Rocket Lab growing faster. They're spending money to do it, raising capital to do it. And I think the growth rate has been quite impressive. We're also looking at impressive growth for 2024 as well. And that growth is not all coming from acquisitions because, you know, they haven't really made any acquisitions for a year now and we're still seeing big growth coming this year. So um, I do have to say I like both of these companies. I think you all know I like Rocket Lab, but for someone who wants to invest in the space industry and is a little bit 
more risk averse or, you know, doesn't want to take as much risk. I think MDA is a great company and it's probably my favorite space company that I don't currently own in my portfolio. And I'd love to hold some of them as well as Rocket Lab, but it's hard because I feel like Rocket Lab is very cheap right now. So I did add more recently, but I just wanted to highlight, you can't just say, okay, Rocket Lab is half the price that it used to be. Therefore it's crazy cheap. I think we got to compare it to other companies, look at some of these other metrics, such as the price to sales, as well as being informed by the growth rate. In terms of other intangibles that you have to think about beyond just the growth rate we've seen recently and the price to sales ratios, we can also talk about leadership in Rocket Lab. I mean, we, I love their leadership. I love Peter Beck. I think Adam Spice is extremely smart, very confident in the company management, but MDA also has some pretty great leadership. They did have their CEO recently win a Satellite Executive of the Year award, so that's quite impressive, and he's obviously executing if they've been growing at a 29% over the past couple years. Uh, when it comes to the vision, now, MDA has some very impressive new satellites. They do have payload, which Rocket Lab doesn't currently have, but Rocket Lab does have what I consider to be a more compelling long-term vision because for MDA, what it looks like is they're just going to continue building satellites, selling those satellites to other people, which should be a solid business, don't get me wrong, and then also building the you know space robotics, space infrastructure, stuff like that. I mean, they'll continue to be a good margin, a good business. And you know, that's fine. Rocket Lab on the other hand, with the full integration, having launch in the mix, while launch is not always the highest revenue business, I think it really just closes the whole system. Being able to launch your own satellites whenever you want, and operate them yourself, getting the revenue, really cutting out the middleman, because if you think about it, MDA selling these satellites, taking their cut, the other person on the end of the line, you know, absorbing those costs and then operating the constellation. Why not just cut out the middleman, have Rocket Lab build their own satellites, operate them, get that recurring revenue stream as opposed to the one-off revenue stream of selling your satellite and being done. That's generally much more attractive to analysts and investors over the long term. It's like the whole SaaS versus just selling a piece of software business model, why analysts are loving how Microsoft is bringing in revenue every month on Microsoft Office subscriptions, and they used to just sell Microsoft Word and Outlook and be done with it. So very attractive model bringing in that recurring revenue when it should be very high margin once the satellites are up there orbiting and providing their service. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of costs to keep them running, you know, just replenishing the constellation and that sort of thing. So Rocket Lab, I think, in my opinion, growing faster, a good bet for if you are high risk, high reward, willing to take that risk, willing to pay for the higher growth. I do like their long-term vision a little bit more than I do for MDA. And in my mind, the growth and the vision does justify the premium on the price to sales ratio. But I think as investors, we do have to recognize that that premium is there and we can see that Rocket Lab is trading at a higher price to sales than a company that is already profitable like an MDA. So MDA, uh, interesting company. I am a fan of theirs as well. We'll continue to follow them. Us Canadians have a weird amount of national pride about the Canada arm, even though it's just a robotic arm in space. But yeah, it has our name on it and we love it. So there's always that. And uh, wouldn't be surprised to invest in MDA at some point down the line either as well and hold both in my portfolio. If you do want exposure to the space industry and you're a little worried about risk, you want to invest in a company that's already profitable, I think there's nothing wrong with investing in MDA either. I do like both of these companies. So let me know how you're thinking about these metrics down below. Did it shock you to learn that even though Rocket Lab has dropped 58%, they're still trading at a higher price to sales ratio than a company like MDA, which hasn't dropped much over the past couple years. Um, I think that might be eye opening to some investors who look at the stock price and not much further. Anyway, I do hope you guys have found this interesting and useful. If it has been useful to you and you're not already a subscriber, please do 
hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel with the continued growth. And thank you again to all my channel members for your support. Very much appreciated keeping the channel running. Anyone who is already a subscriber can always help out by hitting that like button. And I'll be sure to check out your comments down below. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.